So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to explore our latest version of the VIR chart algorithm. So here are the guidelines and steps of our algorithm, and we're going to employ those, at least partially in this video, um, for this particular circuit up here. These are the questions we're going to answer. Now we're going to start this in class and finish it up in, um, I'm sorry, start this on the video and finish it up in class. So here's, um, the, um, circuits. Here's our VIR chart. First thing we want to do is we want to, um, check out the circuit, um, in the same fashion as we had our, uh, previous circuit. So there's the battery. Okay. So coming out of the positive side of the battery, we've got this one 4 ohm resistor, it's that 4 ohm resistor there, and then there's a 4 ohm, then 8 ohm resistor, so 4 ohm, 8 ohm resistor, with a 20 amp current going through the 4 ohm resistor. Finally, these two currents, that current and that current, combine there at location E, um, and go through this uh, 1 ohm resistor, and then back to the battery. So first let's look for the equivalent resistance. So if we drew this as a vertical circuit, this is what our vertical circuit would look like, these are what we know, these four resistors in this 20 amp um, current. Um, let's um, take it one step at a time. Let's combine two, two resistors at a time. This 8 ohm and that 4 ohm are in series, so we can just add them to get 12 ohms right there. Then these two resistors are in parallel, so we would use this equation here to go about figuring out their equivalent resistance. So using this equation, we end up with three ohms. So this, these two sets of parallel resistors have an equivalent resistance of three. And then finally, we take that three ohm resistor, add it to that one ohm resistor because they're effectively in series, and we get a total or equivalent resistance of four ohms. So now with our 4 ohm resistance, um, equivalent resistance put into our VIR chart, we can figure out a few more things. So um, we were given the fact that this was, uh, there were, there is um, 20 amps going through this 4 ohm resistor. So 20 times 4 gives us 80. And we were also given the fact that there is this 20, um, I'm sorry, we're, we were given this fact that there was 20 amps. So that 20 amps that's going through this resistor hasn't had a chance to split up um, when it gets to this 8 ohm resistor. So the current has to be the same there and there. Remember, we're thinking of them as flowing um, charges. And since these flowing charges aren't splitting up between that 4 ohm resistor and that 8 ohm resistor, the current has to be the same at both locations. So that's why we filled that out there. Um, then we know that if I take my 4, my 20, and multiply it times my 4, I get a voltage drop of 80 volts. So this height right here, we would call that an 80-volt drop. So we're using our height analogy. Okay. Um, then since we know we've got 20 amps going through this 8-ohm resistor, 20 times 8 gives 160. So this voltage drop here is 160 volts. If this is 80, this voltage drop is 80, and this voltage drop is 160 for this entire side here, then the total drop from top to bottom is 240 for just this section of the circuit. Since this, uh, since on this side there's only one resistor, we know its voltage drop has got to be 240. So this 80 and this 160 give us a voltage drop of 240 for this 4 ohm resistor. So for this other 4 ohm resistor, I can plug in 240 volts in my VIR chart. Then using my VIR equation Ohm's law, I can take 240 divided by 4 to get 60. And that means I've got a current of 60 amps going through this section of the circuits. Now, because of the junction rule, the law of conservation of charge says that when this 60 amp current gets to this point here and this 20 amp current gets to this point here, they add up. 60 plus 20 gives me 80 amps. So I've got 80 amps going through the 1 ohm resistor. Then finally, well not finally, but this 80 amps times that 1 ohm resistor gives me a, a voltage drop of 80 volts for this section okay, of our circuit. Now we've got the entire voltage drop. 
So if I take 80, I add it to 160 and add it to 80, I get 320 volts. So that's the entire voltage drop for the, um, the circuit is 320 volts. I can take the um, total voltage drop, 320, divided by my equivalent resistance to find what we call our circuit current. Now the circuit current is important because it's the circuit coming out of the battery and going into the battery. So notice we've got 80 volts coming out of the battery that splits up, I'm sorry, 80 amps coming out of the battery. 60 amps goes that way, 20 amps goes this way. It recombines here to make 80 amps and then the 80 amps return back up here to the um, to the battery. Um, one of the things we want to also be mindful of is the way in which the um, uh, the loop rule works or conservation of energies. We're using that height analogy. This 60 volts, this 160 volts, and this this 80 volt voltage drop. They all add up to 320. And we'll talk a little more in class about um, how we're going to verbal or how we're going to include our written responses with respect to um, the conservation of energy and the conservation of charge.